Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know that he's wonderful? Hallelujah. And glory. Honor. And power. Unto the Lord our God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Lord and God that we serve. Would not trade him. I thank the Lord that he brought us back to the house of the Lord one more time. Let's praise him. Let's, let's praise him for that. Death did not catch us. And though the enemy tried to illegally touch some of us this week, he tried to illegally touch some of us this week. But the blood of Jesus The blood of Jesus kept us. What a mighty God we serve. So I lift my voice to him. And I lift my hands to him. And I bow down to him. I surrender all. As I am. I surrender all. I surrender my mind right now in the name of Jesus. I'm preparing my mind. I'm preparing my heart for a mighty move of him today. I'm looking for the rain to fall. I'm looking for the rain to fall. After the rain comes the dew of the anointing. Oh, yeah. I need him. Anybody need it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel his presence right now. So, Lord, you are wonderful. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory has filled this house this morning. Salvation because it is free to man. If you desire him, he's here. Thank you because you are a doctor. That you have never lost the case. But forgive me, Lord. I forgot to ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Both sins that I know that I've done. And then sins that I didn't know. So before I come before your presence. Your word says. That if I confess my sins, you are just and you are faithful to forgive me of all my sins. Then you promise God oh, to take my sins and put them in the deepest sea of forgiveness. And you promise God. To not to bring the sins up against me ever again. Not even in a day of judgment. 
So Lord, I come. I thank you and I praise you, oh God. Because you watched over us last night while we knew nothing of ourselves. And then you caused the angels to touch us this morning. Giving us strength. Giving us health and strength. And so you brought us into this atmosphere this morning so that we can love on you and appreciate all that you've done. Have your way, oh God, in this house this morning. We come now, God, asking that you would bless every individual that should come into this house today. Father, you know our needs and you know what we in need of. And so we lay them at the altar right now. We come right now, God, because somebody needs you that's in the hospital room. Somebody needs you right now that's on the streets. Hallelujah. Somebody needs you, oh God, to just put your arms of uh, protection around them. God, we can't make it without you. And Father, we ask right now that this atmosphere is conducive for your spirit to ride and have his way. We thank you for the man of God, and we thank you for the woman of God in this house. We ask right now, God, that the praise team will sing so that you will be pleasing in your ears and that your presence will come because your word says you bask in the glory of your men and your people that worship you. And them that worship you, God, you said, do it in truth. And so, God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that if somebody is praying for us today, we thank you that Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. He's forever, forever making intercessions for us. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. Said, Lord God, give them one more chance. Give them another opportunity. Father, don't let me get up right now. Uh, don't let me get up off the seat right now. Give them another chance to repent.
praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with so much praise.
to see its word. It sounds like music in my ears. It's the sweetest name, sweetest name on earth. And oh, how I love Jesus. My heart sings, oh.
Lord, on this morning. God, we bless you. God, we thank you. Say, it is the sweetest name I know. How many of you believe that to be true on this morning? Glory to God. How many of you really believe that to be true on this morning? Something about that name, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. The song says it's the sweetest. It's the sweetest name I know. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Can you taste and see that it's sweet? Can you taste and see that it's sweet? Not by what your friends say, but by what you know on your own. Oh, Lord, I've tasted. And I know that you are sweet to me. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. It's the sweetest name. Some folk call on Buddha. Some folk call on Muhammad. But can I tell you who has the sweetest name? His name is Jesus. Emmanuel. God with us. The sweetest name. Woo, glory to God. The sweetest name I know. Will you give God some praise all over the building on this morning? Will you just give God some praise right where you are? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for the opening prayer. Amen. Thank God for the praise team on this morning. And let me just say real quickly to you, Aja. You are a breath of fresh air. You are a breath of fresh air. Don't let nothing stop you from lifting up your praise to God. That's an anointing that you can't, you can't buy that. You can't, you can't manufacture that. God has just dropped it on you. God has just blessed you with it. Thank you for being such an inspiration. Thank you for just being you. So God, we bless you. That's power all by itself. That's power all by itself. Woo, glory. Just stand flat-footed and let God use you. Oh, my God. The power of God. You can't see God being manifested in just, even in the song and the people that he uses. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for your glory. Thank you, God, for your sound. Thank you for the sound. A sound of renewal, a sound of freshness. Ah, my, 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 my. Glory to your name. Woo! Ha! Ah. Sometimes I wish I could just give you what I feel. Or cause you to feel what I feel. Because you can't go to Walmart and buy that. You, you can't order that in Amazon. You got to come and feel it for yourself. I know those of you who are in virtual world, you probably sitting there saying, what's going on? But, but, but in the presence of God, it's the fullness. Ah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Love it when I can feel it. Ah, thank you, Master. Thank you, Savior. Glory. Glory to your name. I want to not belabor the time on this morning. I want to allow you to hear what God is saying to his people on this morning. And I was I was sharing with my armor bearers a little earlier this morning. It's, it's, it's something when you when you think you have all together what God wants you to say, and in the midst of all of that, God shift you, God move you. And it's, it's kind of nerve-wracking because I was trying to have a plea with God and say, well, God, I already got it. And God said, you going to speak what I want to speak or you going to speak what you want to speak. And so that was the end of that conversation. So if I'm going to be his mouthpiece, I got to speak what he said. Glory to God. So God, I, I, I thank you for what you are doing in this place called Pleasant Hill. God, I thank you 
for what you're doing in the lives of your people. So continue to do what only you can do. Move from heart to heart. Move from pew to pew. Continue to saturate this place. Even over the airways, God, touch even now to bless your people richly. I want to give honor to God who's my life, he's my health, and my strength. What an honor, amen, the apple of my eye, the sugar on my cocoa pops. That beautiful young lady of some 38 years, glory to God. If it wasn't for God, she'd be the only reason I'd get up. Hallelujah. So God, I bless you for her. Bless you for allowing her to love me for some 38, 38 years. God Almighty. Y'all look in the Bible and see what happened after in 38 years. I won't preach that, but just, just, just think about it. Anybody remember the man who sat there? That's, that's, that, that's a little too deep. I want to honor God for all the word carriers. Amen. Even Doc smiling in her absence. Amen. We, we bless you, Doc. Amen. And we're praying for you. Amen. And your sister. Amen. And God will keep you strong and continue for a speedy recovery. Amen. So we honor our leadership tier, our deacons, our deaconess, our executive staff. Amen. And all of you, God's children. We say, God bless you on this morning. We thank God for you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, God as humble as we know how to give what thus says the Lord. So Lord, remove me from self. Use me, God, that I may be able to impart your word unto your people. God, open the hearts and the minds of your people, Lord God, and allow them to not only be hearers of your word, but allow them to be doers of your holy and rich word. So Father, we bless you now for what you will do and for what you will say in this place on this day. It is in your darling son Jesus' name that we do pray. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Well, grab your word in your hand, amen, or grab your electronic devices, amen, and go with me to 2 Samuel. Glory to God. 2 Samuel. When you get to 2 Samuel, go to that 23rd chapter. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel chapter 23. Glory to God. And we'll start reading at that very first verse. When you get that signified by saying amen or give me a thumbs up. Glory to God. And you shall find these words written. Now these be the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his words was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, and he that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springeth out of the earth by a clear shining after rain. I want to talk to you this morning from that first verse, say to you, a leader's last words. Hallelujah. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and tell him a, a leader's last word. We know David was a leader. We know David was a warrior. We know David was a mighty man of God. And I want to talk to you this morning just for a little while from the topic, a leader's last words. Most time when we look at that and we talk about last words, we often think about Jesus and his last words and his last saying. But this morning I want to shift you because David has something so important to say that we got to hear what David says. And I tell you this because we're living in a culture now where all of life is dependent upon 
what leaders say and what leadership does and in the decisions that leaders make. It's going to take me a little minute on this runway, amen, to develop where I'm going, but it's going to hit you when I get there. Um, our culture shifts so much that oftentimes we have to shift with the definition of leadership because as culture shifts, we can't stick with what we thought it meant. In most cases, we think leadership is for leaders. But I want you to know this morning that leadership applies to folks who are even um, in other positions other than leadership. Uh, I'll give you an example because if most of us are on Facebook or some uh, social media, if you got followers, amen, oftentimes you believe you are a leader. Even if you don't possess the leadership qualities because folks are following you, it says you must be a leader. I, I say that to say this because um, just because people follow you don't make you a good leader. Just because people are on your Facebook page or, or give you some likes don't make you a good leader. If you don't have the qualities of a leader, you might be leading, but you might be leading in the wrong direction. If you don't have the wherewithal to lead folk in the way that God has called you to go, then it says you're leading them on a path to destruction. Pastor, why are you going there? Because in this season, even though we're following, we don't think we're leading. Even though you're following somebody, somebody is following. Okay, somebody missed that. You might be a follower, but look behind you, somebody was following you. And if somebody is following you, you they leader. Okay, okay. Y'all going to make me break this thing down a little bit too much this morning. You, you're not just fa fathering children. You're actually leading them. I'm not just pastoring a church. I'm actually leading the church. Uh, uh, let me, can I go a little farther? If you're over any area of this business or any area of ministry, you're not just over it. You're actually leading it. And if you're not a leader, then you're in the wrong position. Uh, I'll go a little farther because in today's society, we pick folk because we like them, not because they're qualified. In, to, in today's society, you don't have to have a recommendation. You don't have to have all the uh, prerequisites. Matter of fact, you don't even have to be trained for to make you a leader anyhow. Because I like you or because you carry my last name will put you up as a leader even though you don't have the qualifi qualification to be such. Well, let me just bring this home because in Doherty County we're having elections and most of you might not even be aware of that, but there's three seats in the city commission that's up for grabs. And because we're not registered, because we're not prepared, a lot of times we say, we ain't, that don't even matter. But it does matter. Because leaders are the ones who make changes in our community. I, I'm going somewhere. Those three seats, amen, can easily be taken over by somebody else if we would get together and go out and vote. But a hard part is, sometimes we don't even vote. And then we say, why things won't change? You have to be a part of the change agent. Well, these things are going on in Doherty County, and I wish somebody would change it. If you vote. Now, this is not a voters' campaign, but I'm showing you how leadership works. Folk get together and decide who they're going to put up, and they go out and vote. We go back, and we sit back and say, well, it don't matter. All I'm trying to say is, as a leader, you have to be prepared to lead. And as followers, you want a good leader. Mm. Our history is marked with good leaders. God uses men who are great leaders to lead his country. If you don't believe that, it, back in the days, even in Genesis, around the sixth chapter, it talks about there was giants in the land. But watch this, the giants didn't rule the land. The giants was in the land, but guess who ruled the land? Come on, somebody. There was a man named Noah who ruled the land. So God uses Noah. So even though there's giants, and you think giants would rule the land, God said they was in the land of Noah. No one in the land of the giants. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Which means, watch this, watch this. Conceptually, even though they are giants, there are no giants to according to Noah. They are no bigger than Noah because Noah is ruler. Noah is leader. Pastor, how did you go there? Because we sometimes fall behind things because it's bigger than us. We sometimes step back because our situations, our circles are bigger than us and we forget who our God is. And if God's on your side, how can your circumstance be bigger than who you are? How can your giants be bigger than your God? 
tells me you didn't get my first teaching when I told you God is greater. God is bigger. And if God is on my side, there is no circumstance, there is no situation that's too hard for God. Are you asking the right questions? Mm. God, what you want me to do in this situation? God, what you want me to do in this circumstance? God, am I the leader in this hour, in this season that you want me to move? And if so, when? Okay, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. A lot of us are trying to manage things that we can't manage ourselves. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, I, I need to manage me. If I'm not in charge of me, how can I be in charge of somebody else? If I let my life run out of control, all I'm going to do is mess somebody else's life. So once I get me in control, then God can use me for his glory. But if I can't manage me, how can God use me? If I can't keep myself under control, if I can't keep my uh, passions on my ears, how can God use me when I'm out of control? Glory to God. God wants to use man because he said, I gave man dominion. A lot of us want God to get off his throne and come down here and do something. But God said, my purpose and my plan is just to use you. Are you available for me to use you? Because I can't get off my throne. I already did that one time. Came back and redeemed mankind to myself. I already been there, done that. And so now my purpose is to use you, to use man. Male and female for my glory. And so every time I want to make a move, I want to make it through you. Okay, somebody missed that. Somebody missed. God gave you dominion. You are not just a man, but guess what? You are more than that. You are a move. <laughs> Y'all going to make me preach too hard. I'm just trying to get us to understand even Elijah, as powerful as he was, he wasn't just a prophet, but he was a move. Even Elisha, who came along as his successor, wasn't just a successor. He was a move. See, see, John the Baptist in the New Testament, he wasn't just a forerunner. He was a move. God used. Look at the most powerful positions in Bible and wonder what God did to make it happen. On the day of Pentecost, I'll stop there and put a pen in it. I'll just say, Peter. Okay. On Azusa Street, the most powerful move on the planet Earth. Come on, somebody. God used a man, William J. Seymour. Okay, okay. Y'all thought God came down and did it himself. Furthermore, the one I just told you about, when he wanted to redeem you back to him, he still used a man. He used himself. He put on flesh. Came down as mortal men to do the great work to bring you back to him. So every time God wants to make a move, he uses a man. So when you look at yourself, you may as well go ahead and tell him, I'm a move. <laughs> oh, see, ah! You thought you was just a man. You thought you was just a woman. But I want to tell you this morning, you are a move. Glory to God. You are a move of God. That's why I love children's church and some of those other youth programs because they say, I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Somebody may not know that song. I don't took you back too far. But this morning, I just want to tell you, I am a M. I am a M-O. I am a M-O-V-E-O-F-G-O-D. God Almighty, don't tell them. I am a move of God. Okay, okay. I was trying to help y'all understand. You got to understand who you are. Don't wait. Don't wait for the revival to be a move. Don't, don't wait for the prayer meeting to be a move. Go ahead and tell yourself and convince yourself, I am a move. Every time I walk in the room, I'm moving. I don't care what's happening. I, I'm a, woo, God. God is using you to do something different, and you like, God, why, why me? Because you've been chosen. You've been anointed. You've been appointed. You, you wonder why everybody in the room is different than you, because God wants you to change the room. God wants you to change the God, God wants to use you. If not, he would have picked somebody else. This is a leader's last words. David says, and you know David, 
I don't want to give you his pedigree. I don't want to give you his history. I don't want to give you all the things that he accomplished. I just want to tell you that David writes a letter at the end of his life to tell you the best parts of his life. Anybody ever heard of a will and testament? Uh, it, it, it happens because those are your last words of what you want to happen. Um, it puts in concrete what you're saying to those folks, what they want you to do, what you want you to have, what you want you to, to, uh, to accomplish with my stuff that I'm leaving for you. These are my last words for you to accomplish, for you to achieve. And that's what David says in, in this passage. He said, now these are the last words of David. Glory to God. What I'm going to tell you in this passage is the last thing that he said. And David is trying to give us instructions about leadership and about armies. God, I'm confused. Out of all the psalms that David wrote, out of all the battles that David won, why would his last words to us be about leadership and be about the army. Mm. As God began to reveal through his scriptures, David says, you got to have the right leader. You got to have a leader who will stand when nobody else will stand. And not only will he stand, David says, your leader has to have some just in him. He's got to be fair. He can't have them little pickings and choosing he can't be a part of the little clique. He got to know how to say yes, and he got to know how to say, he got to know how to manage himself. Got to know when to come and when to go. Got to know when to spin and when to stop. Got to know when to keep on saying something. Got to know when to shut up. A leader got to be able to manage himself before he can manage you. Ah, pastor, where you going? David says these are the type of leaders that will do well. If they are just leaders, unbiased leaders, pick you because you're a good tithing. Pick you because you're my running boy. Pick you because I know you're going to be faithful. I'll get there later. David says if you are just, you always make the right decision. Not only that, but David says a good leader has to have the fear of the Lord. A lot of us fear man, but we don't fear God. A lot of us do what man say, but we won't do what God say. A lot of us as leaders, we'll sit back and tell God, hey, I'm questioning why you called me to do this. But man, you'll just jump on up and do it. We want to satisfy man because man will allow us to have some compromises. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. God say, I ain't scratching nobody, just do what I say. I'll help you if you're going to help me. That's when we are trying to serve man or, or when we have fear of man. Man's voice shouldn't have nothing in it. We ought to be able to hear God. And man should be able to confirm what God has already told me. If the first time you hear, you hear it from me, baby, you ain't in God. You ain't praying enough. You ain't fasting enough. You ain't seeking God enough. My word should confirm what God had already told you. Oh, some, somebody missed that, huh? Unless you just a babe and you ain't grown there. If you say God called you the pastor, I shouldn't be the first one to tell you that. God should have already told you that. And by the time I come along and tell you, it confirmed what God had already put in you. I come and tell you, oh, you're going to be a truck driver. And you ain't even got no license. Okay. The only thing I'm trying to tell you this morning is David is setting us up to hurt us for a minute. Because he said, this is so critical, this is so important, and you got to hear it. I need leaders who are fair, I need leaders who are just, and I need leaders who fear the Lord. Furthermore, when these enemies come after you, there are certain leaders who will do a great job. And they are called the mighty men of valor. Out of all the battles David went through, he picks three men. Out of the hundreds of battles he had. And said, these are the type of men you ought to be. I, I'll read just a little bit because in that 23rd chapter down around about the 8th verse, David says this. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Why did he pick three men when he had probably 300 leaders? And he only picked three. I'm going somewhere. In life, sometimes you're going to have to make some choices. Even Jesus 
from the 70, he chose 12. Can I go a little farther? From the 12, he chose three. What that is to say, in some of the places, in some of the battles you're going, you ain't going to need that many folk. A lot of times when we are making critical decisions, if your room is full of people, you ain't going to ever get to a decision. You're going to do a whole lot of talking, and you ain't going to get nowhere. So God is saying to us, at some point, you got to know how many people you need to make that decision. You got to know how much you need to win this battle. Glory to God. Verse 8. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tecmonite that sat in the seat, chief of the captains, and the same was Adino, glory to God, an Enzimite. And he lifted up the spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. David said, that's the type of leader you need. Adino, a mighty man of God, slew 800 men at one time. That's the type of leader you ought to be. Hallelujah. He goes just a little farther. And after him was a man who was named Eleazar, the son of Dodo. A lot of folk read it doo-doo. The Ahonite, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men of David, when David and the Philistines that were gathered together in the battle and the men of Israel were going away, watch this, watch this, he rose, he stood up and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand claved to the sword. And the Lord walked, worked a great miracle, a great victory that day. Hallelujah. Watch this, watch this. Out of the three men David chose, watch Eleazar. How he worked hard. After all the men of Israel decided we're going back. The Bible says he stood there and continued to fight. He stood there and continued. He said the battle not over when my hand get tired. The battle over when it's done. Or oh, somebody, somebody missed that. When everybody else is gone, I, I got to still fight. The Bible says he fought so hard that, that the sword stuck to his hand. When you get tired, you may want to put the sword down. But because the sword was stuck in his hand, God wouldn't let it put him down. Sometimes when the word God give us is stuck to us, we can't put it down. Pastor, I want to go home. I want to quit. But I know what God has called me to do because I'm a leader God has chosen. I want to put it down, but it's stuck to me. Glory to God. Even in relationships. Pastor, where you going? Sometimes we want to put it down, but God has stuck you to it. Mm. Somebody, somebody get that a little later. David is trying to get us to understand that in this letter he writes to us, he wants us to know that these are the things you need to possess to be a great leader. And these are the types of leaders you need. These are my last words to you. In a letter or in a writing, there's a salutation. I says, uh, dear so-so, or my name is so-and-so. In the body of the letter or in the summation of the letter, it tells you what I want you to do or where I want you to go or the things I want you to accomplish. But the most important part of the letter is the conclusion of the whole matter. It's what I say at the end. Um, on somebody's deathbed, what he said at the last is what's most important. Glory to God. Even in Jesus saying out of all the work that he did, out of all the miracles that he performed when he was on the cross, what he said was most important. As I push just a little farther, what David is trying to get us to say is, I'm telling you what you need and this is the most important part. These are the type of men you need around you. These are the type of folk you need. In this type of army, leadership is changing. When you search out the room, just because they are in the room don't mean they are with you. Woo! Woo! Uh, uh, the most important part, we understand that, that David was from the son of Jesse, but now he has gotten beyond a man at Jesse. We understand that David was even uh, fighting against Saul, but at this particular point, I'm beyond Saul. I'm, I'm going somewhere. In life, we got to make choices on who's going to be in our army at the particular battle. Let me speak to leaders real quickly. You in the same boat I'm in, you're going to have to choose 
whether you're going to deal with faithfulness or whether you're going to deal with competence. Okay, okay. I, I know that's a hard choice because sometimes the ones who are faithful, they're not competent. And let me go a little farther. And the ones who are competent, they're not faithful. So you got to do the dance. Who do I pick? Somebody who's faithful or somebody who's covered when I can't have both? David, David helps us because most of us, we pick the one we like. We pick the one who's faithful because we can teach them not that they're not competent. Not that they don't have the ability to learn the skills or the tools that you're trying to get them to. Let me go the other route. I would choose the one who's competent, but I'm so worried because he ain't faithful. And because he can do it, he ain't available. For me, he ain't able. So if you're able, I need you to be available. So from a leader, how do you make that decision on who you're going to choose when you got to have one or the other? I would prefer to have someone who's faithful and competent. But if it's not available, which one do you choose? This is going to hurt us because we always go with faithful. If they faithful, that's all I need. And that's why you're going to stay right where you are. You got to take what's competent and teach it to be faithful. You can't teach competence if they are not in, oh my if they're not literate enough to understand it. But you can always take competence and cause it to be faithful. Okay, somebody somebody missed that. Somebody, somebody didn't like that because uh, you want to pick your family. Somebody didn't like that because you, you and her been friends ever since y'all was in grade school. Somebody didn't like that because y'all always be, him and him, him and him, and I'm going to stick with you forever. That ain't what God said to do. You got to pick somebody who can do the job. Woo! I'm just trying to help us because if we don't understand this next battle, we got folks in our army who can't do the work. You can train folk to fight. But we, we go with the assumption or the presumption that when they with me, they'll fight for me. You better wake up. Just because they with you don't mean they with you. I, I know that's I know that's I know that's hard, but I don't want to take the risk with somebody who's competent who might not show up tomorrow. And I don't want to be lonely if I gotta get rid of the faithful. So now I'm stuck. I'm in betwixt. Am I worried? Or am I lonely? He has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of joy. And of a sound mind. So I ain't worried because I got somebody who's competent. My job is to teach them to be faithful. I ain't worried if the faithful leave. Because he said, I am a friend to the friends. I come. When you are all by yourself, I am still there with you. So me, him, oh my God, he will be with me. He will never forsake me nor leave me. So even when the faithful walk away, it's still me and him. So I, whoo, why y'all get so nervous? Why y'all, why y'all get so timid? All I'm saying is God is trying to teach us that in this next battle, you got to have the right army to fight. Got folk running media. They can't type. They don't know technology. They don't, they don't know what a Wi-Fi is but they over your media ministry because they're faithful. They can show up, but they can't scream. Okay. Okay. That's, is that too deep? All I'm saying is in this next battle, you got to find folk who can do the job. And if you don't find folk who can do the job, then you need to move them. I, I still love you, but, but, but you got to move. I, I still love you, 
But it's a season for, um, the, in the corporate world, they call it downsizing. Even on the base where I work at, they talking about if you ain't getting the shot, you might get a pink slip. So we have to be careful in who we pick and who we choose. Oh, pastor, you just too hard today. Um, I felt that. I'm not saying you are not anointed to do the work. But what I'm saying is, in this season, when I see you, you got on a turtleneck and a coat. And it's working for you because it's winter. In the next season I see you, you got on a turtleneck and a coat. But it ain't working because it's summer. So I'm not saying you got to change. What happened is the season has changed. And the anointing you used in the last season is not working in this season. Not that you're not anointed. It's just that the season has shifted. And your coat and turtleneck works in the winter. It just don't work in the summer. Ow! God almighty. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. This is, this is fresh off the press. I, I, was, I was telling my armor bearer this morning, I, I had my word. But all of a sudden, God starts shifting. I said, oh, it's hard to talk about leadership because folk be like, you talking to me? No, I'm just talking. You take it wherever you, however you want to. I'm just a word carrier. When God give me the word, it hits whoever it want to hit. God, I just pray it don't return unto me, boy, because God said that his word will not. Okay, let me, let me go just a little further because um, nice people might not be the right people. He's so nice and sweet. Bring me cakes and flowers and cup, you know. Write me little nice cards. Oh, you're the best pastor in the world. Sure I am when I'm doing what you say. But as soon as I ain't doing what you say, you don't even go get a stamp. Okay. This morning I'm trying to share with us David's last words about leadership and about the armies that you choose. And if you're not careful going into the next battle, you're going to go in with the wrong army. And if you go in with the wrong army, your defeat is already destined. So as we choose our army for the next battle, don't just choose those who are with you. Make sure that they are with you. Okay, okay. Don't just choose those who are in the room. Choose those who are in your corner. Okay, okay, okay. I don't even want to go to... Uh, Mike Tyson, one of the greatest fighters of all times. But he was only great when Cuz or Customato was in his corner. As soon as Cuz died or wasn't in his corner, you see who all those folks who was around him caused him not to be great. Picking battles and fights and not preparing for the battle like he used to. He was great when he had somebody in his corner. Not when he just had somebody in the room. I want to be great. And I don't need people in the room. I need them in my corner. Want to be like Jesus. I don't, I don't need seven and maybe just 12. And if the battle is this way, I, I don't need 12. Maybe I just need three. And then there are some times when I just need to go alone. God Almighty. Did I, did I, did I write too much? Don't follow me and follow God. When you have the fear of God, you'll have forgiveness. And, and I believe that's what causes a lot of us issues because there are some things in us that we haven't forgiven yet. We call ourselves Christians and we call ourselves a lovers of God, but we still hold it on to stuff that God told us to get rid of. We still want to apologize or say I'm sorry about things that was way in the past. We still hold it on to it. And when I walk in the room with you because I'm upset with you, you change my mood. Only because I'm giving you power. Because I haven't forgiven you. Well, let me just go a little farther. Because forgiveness is a weapon. It, just because I forgive you don't mean I agree with what you did. I, I, I take my power back by forgiving you. That way when I walk in a room with you, I ain't mad at you. I take my power back because when I walk in a room with you, I'm not going to let you change my mood. 
I, I, I take my power back because when I walk in a room with you, I'm not going to let you um, convince me of my behavior. But when I have not forgiven you, if I see you at Walmart, I'm getting an attitude. If I see you at Lowe's, I'm getting upset because I'm harboring unforgiveness. In my, I don't know where that came from, but somebody needed that. Somebody holding you hostage because you won't forgive them. I don't care what they did to you. But once you forgive them, it'll free you. Forgiveness is about you, not about them. But as long as you let them keep you in bonds and keep you bound up, it's because you won't allow forgiveness to enter in. And that's the fear of man, not the fear of God. When I fear God, I say, oh, I don't know what it was I did to you. I don't know who, how I offended you, but uh, would you please forgive me? So that I can move on. So that when I see you, I can smile. I see you in Walmart and you are on the meat aisle and I got to turn and go down the I don't even want to see them. You, co you come in the uh, Longhorn. I'm sitting at the front table. And when you come in, I ain't hungry no more. Just give my plate to go. That's too much control. And we will stay there if we don't forgive. Glory to God. But y'all already know me. As much as I like food, I don't care who walk in there. I'm going to eat. I, 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 don't, I don't care what's going on. As long as you don't put your hand in my food, baby, it's dinner. Okay. David, let me, let, me, let me wrap up real quickly. David says, I am the light of the morning. Which says to leadership, I have consistency. Which says to leadership, um, I am dependable. And not only that, I, I, I have discipline. David says, every morning the sun gets up. He said, when you got leadership and when you have leadership abilities, every morning, regardless what's going on, you get up. He said, when there's clouds and even when there aren't any clouds. Even when the clouds are out, David says the sun gets up behind the clouds. You just can't see it for the clouds. But the sun don't stay in just because the clouds are ruling the day. And when you got great leadership, no matter what's happening in front of you, you still got to get up. Woo! If you believe and trust in God, he'll give you what you need to get through this day. The pastor looked like it's going to rain. Do you think the sun stay back when it looked like it's going to rain? The sun could care less what Amadeo says. Do you think because there's a 100% chance of rain today, the sun said, I'm going to take a day off. Because as soon as precipitation breaks, the sun is still. Had already been shining, you just couldn't see it. Had already been out, you just couldn't see it. Because of the cloud, because of the rain, it blocks the sun view, but it was still out there. And David says, that's who I am. I am the light of the morning. Every morning I get up. Regardless of what the day holds, every day. Woo! I'm going to get up. David goes a little farther in some other scriptures that I didn't read and says, when the enemy come at you, some of these things we can't take out by hand. We got to fight them in the spiritual realm. You going out there trying to fight folk too. I know you can battle. I, I know you can throw some hands. But David said, that's not what's going to get the enemy. We're fighting in heavenly places. This is a spiritual fight. You, you got to use the weapons of your warfare. You got to know how to speak to that enemy. You got to know how to call it down. You got to know how to battle in tongues. You got to do more than just throw some hands. You got to throw some Jesus. Glory to God. I, I'm, I'm closing, y'all. David wants us to know, even in this, when I was talking about Eliezer, don't, don't drop your sword. No matter what the battle is and no matter how long you've been battling, David is telling us, don't, don't, don't drop your weapon. Don't drop your sword. This is your sword. God is pleased when you're working for him. God sees what you're doing even behind the scene. And a lot of us, we just got to be up to be seen. And God said, I see you. I know everything that you're doing and not doing. You just got to believe and trust in me. I got your back. I got your, I got your back. I like when the young folks go out there and they get ready to go into football games or basketball games. And they look at one another and say, I got your back. You got my back. I got your back. You can, God said, I got your back. You just got to go battle for me. God said, I got your back. You just got to believe I got your back. These are the leader's last words telling us about leadership. 
the traits and the talents and the qualities that we have to possess. And then telling us to make sure you choose the right army for the right battle. Don't you go into battle with a stick and they got guns. Amen. Don't you get prepared to fight a battle that you don't have the right weapons to fight with. Choose you some men who can fight with you and who are with you. Glory to God. I like it when you say, nobody told me that the road whoo, would be. I'm, I'm just trying to say because we want to walk down this thing like it's easy. We want to walk down this thing like we ain't going to have no battles, no fussing, no fight. And David is saying to us, it ain't going to always be easy. So I'm going to tell you what David said. Nobody told him that, it would, that the road would be easy. But at the very end of life, I don't believe. Woo! Hey! I don't believe he brought me this far. No matter what kind of enemies came, no matter what kind of battles came, because he brought me here, I know he'll take me through. Don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. So when your friends don't think so, tell them I'm still a move. Even when it don't look like it, I'm still a move. That's what helps you to get through. All the hell you've been through. And you think God going to leave you now? All the trouble and trials that you had to deal with? And you think he going to back out on you now? He hadn't brought you this far. Woo! I thank God that he said, I don't. It's a mindset. Ain't no way in the world you're going to convince me that he's going to leave me. Ain't no way in the world you're going to convince me that he's going to let me go. Ain't no way in the world you're going to convince me that he ain't with me. Woo! I don't believe it. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Glory to God. Woo! I don't believe it, y'all. Even when the warriors was tired in their spirit, they were saying, like the song said, I don't, I don't feel it. I'm going to just keep on swinging, keep on chopping. Even though my physical body is tired, I don't feel like it. Woo, glory to God. Nobody told me this road. you this far to let you go? How I many you know he didn't bring you this far to drop you off? Glory to God. God, I, God, I bless you. See, th th them some of them old school songs that, that just crawl up in your spirit. God, I thank you. God, I bless you that you didn't bring me this far to leave me. Woo! <laughs> why why y'all trying to push me back to the old school? Got them things just crawling up in my spirit. Can't do it. Can't do it. Cause, Cause he'll make me say something like this. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Woo! Oh. 
Y'all, y'all better stop. Y'all better stop. I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to shut this Bible. I'm about to. Because those, those are some of the old songs that, 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 that'll get you. You want another one? Y'all ever heard a song called, uh, my mama used to play it every morning we used to get up. It was called No Charge. For the nine months that I carried you, growing inside of me, hey, no, no, no charge. Don't y'all act like I didn't come up in a Christian house. Don't y'all act like, don't y'all act like my mama didn't know no song. Hey, glory to God. For the nine months. Whoop. No. No charge. Okay, okay. I'm done. I'm done. Father God, we thank you this morning. God, we bless you for all your mighty works, for all your mighty acts. God, we thank you because nobody can do us like you do. Glory to God. You are my God. You are my rock. You are my savior. You are the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. You are a way out of nowhere. You are the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Ah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He says for leaders, watch this, watch this. God is saying for leaders, you're looking for a spinning wheel. God said the leader's gonna have to take the wheel and cause it to spin. He said, I'm not going to give you a spinning wheel. I'm just going to give you the wheel. And if you are a leader, it's your job to cause that wheel to spin. So we always look for a handout. God said, I'm giving you a hand up. Glory to God. I don't mind helping you, but there's no handouts. There's hands up. Because I want you to go up. This is a leader's last words. Jesus did a whole lot on earth. But from Genesis to Revelation, recorded what he wanted us to know. He left us his will. So we'll know how to follow him. So we'll know what he wanted us to do. So when he went off to glory, he said, I'm going to leave you this because it's my responsibility to you to do what I've instructed you. And even when you feel like you can't do it, I'm going to send the comforter, the teacher, the Holy Spirit that will help you to accomplish what I've told you. I'm just stuck on it because I, I see him coming down from glory. But at the point, he was a, in the form of the dove. But prior to that, thank you, Holy Ghost, there was a voice from heaven. It said, uh, media man, turn me all the way up. I want the whole world to hear. Y'all didn't, didn't hear? So this is not just for those standing there, but the whole world. I want you to hear what God says. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. That's so profound in the fact that Jesus hadn't done nothing. He hadn't performed no miracles. He hadn't healed no bodies. He hadn't done no work. But prior to, God said to the world, this is my son in whom I and well pleased. So you ain't got to work to please me. Just do what I've chosen you to do. I'm pleased if you don't do anything because you my son. And then his first challenge was, watch this, watch this. I'm, 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 I'm done, y'all. Y'all just, just pushing me this morning. His first challenge was the old tempter, old Satan. I'm in Matthew 7 chapter. That came to him and said, if, if you be the son of God, that bothers me because God just told the whole world, 
this is. He just made a declaration, a proclamation. This is my son in whom I'm well, well pleased. And then the enemy without introduction came and said, if you be the son of God, what, what, what bothers me with that whole party is how did he know who he was? How did, how did he have any idea who the two were? What we don't understand is that this ain't the first time they met. This is a sequel. This, this is a second event. They met initially when in the garden. They met the first time when Adam and Eve was on the scene. When God said, let us make man. He was already there and won the first fight. And now Satan comes and challenges him again. Won a rematch. And we know that at the end of the story, he takes him out again. Glory to God. God is just teaching us as leaders. I've given you everything that you need. I've spoken to you time and time and time again. You just got to recall what I've told you. Everybody looking for a new word. But that's not scriptural. Uh, what's, a, what's a new one? God will use the same old word and do a new thing. It's not a new word. It's the same word. God is just using the, the same word to do new things. So there is no new word. It's just a new thing. Glory to God. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hi. On this morning, amen, as we stand in, on this morning, as we stand in, there may be one, amen, there may be one who's never said yes unto the Lord. There may be one who's never given their life to Christ. And I want to encourage you this morning. You can't do nothing. You can't be nothing without the Lord on your side. So I want to challenge you this morning. If you never accepted him or never said yes to him, allow today to be the first day of the rest of your life. The Bible says that But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son That whosoever That's you That's me Believing in him Shall not perish But have ever Lasting life Just believe And confess It's all it takes That you may become a new Christian Or a new creature In Christ is there one this morning, amen, that's willing to step out on crisis? Is there one out in virtual world who's willing to say yes to the Lord this morning? Glory to God. God, we bless you and God, we thank you. Thank you for sending your darling son down through 42 generations that we may have a right to the tree of life. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for covering us. Thank you that if we continue to live right, we'll see again. Bless you. Give God a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. Amen. Just, just one announcement, amen, that we'd like to make. Amen. That's, that's for those of you, amen, who are interested in our yoga session, amen, this Friday night at 530. We're asking that you will call the Office of Administration, that you go to our website and sign up so we can make sure, amen, that for those who are going to participate, amen, you can find a sign-up sheet on our website, or you can call the Office of Administration to sign up and come out for our yoga sessions this Friday night at 5.30 in the Health and Wellness Center, amen. And then just want to say to our men who are working with us for the Elevation Project, our Beach Club Project, um, that program, amen, is going to be postponed, amen, just for a little while. We'll continue to talk and give you some information about that. Um,
um, our dates were in conflict with some of the things that Phoebe uh, Putney was doing with their nurses and phlebotomists. So we're going to have to push our dates back just a little bit, and we'll share some information with you on that as well. We're going to continue to push forward, but we're just going to have to change the date of our program. Amen? Amen. Um, the Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. Watch this, watch this. Shall men give unto your bosom, but with the same measure that you meet. The Bible says, with all, it shall be measured unto you again. Hallelujah. I know folks standing outside waiting for dollars to fall from heaven, but the Bible says that men will give to you. Glory to God. And so when men give to you, give credit to God. Hallelujah. You don't know who God will put into your life to bless you. And then you don't know how you've been blessed to bless somebody else. Glory to God. God said he loves a cheerful giver. Not to give grudgingly or of necessity. He wants you to come with a smile on your face. With thanksgiving in your heart. And say, God, I come to give back to you a portion of what you blessed me with. It all belongs to you. Thank you for allowing me to keep part of it. You only want 10%. Uncle Sam take 20, 30, 40, depending on your tax bracket. And we often don't say nothing about it. God said, I'm going to give it all to you and just require 10% back to me. To see if you love me enough and choose me enough to give me back a point. I could have kept the 90 and allowed you to live with the 10. But because I love you, you take the 90 and allow me to operate from the 10. You are a merciful God. You are a wonderful God. Come out Tuesday night for Bible study. And, I'm a, and, I, and I'll teach you how that stronghold manifests itself, even in our finances. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we just want to ask that you would give unto God richly because God will give back unto you. Amen. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat provisions in my house, says the Lord. And see if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. The, the only reason I, I'm so stuck on that is because I, I believe it. I tried it. I trusted it. And I found him to be true to his word. Glory to God. Some things I asked for, he just give it to me. Things I don't even look for, he give it to me. And I believe it's because I'm a faithful tithe. Glory to God. Don't have a need in the world because I'm tithing to God. All my support, all my support comes from the Lord. So God, I bless you. And I thank you. Praise you. Amen. So offering basket will be placed at each of the exits when you prepare to leave, amen, you can put your ties and your offering in those boxes if you're out in virtual world, amen, or using your electronic devices, you can go to our website amen, our PHNBC app you can push the give button and you can begin to sow into ministry that way, if you're not a member, amen we ask that you continue to sow because we know that you're sowing into good ground, and when you sow into good ground those seeds will come up for you again. Amen. I thank God for all of our guests. Amen. All of those who are tuning in with us. Amen. From all over who's sowing seeds. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for what you have done and for what you continue to do. I know you're not a part. Amen. But your gifts, your seeds have been a blessing to move kingdom work. So we want to thank you. Amen. want to thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let us stand to our feet. Amen. To be dismissed. If you have enjoyed yourself this morning. Amen. Will you give God one more great big hand clap of praise? God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we love on you on this morning. Amen, amen, amen. If you look around you and you see somebody who's missing, amen, continue to lift them up in prayer, amen, continue to encourage them and see if there's something that we can do to continue to support them in this season just by showing love one to another. Don't, ever, don't forget, amen, this coronavirus is still very um, active in our communities, so we want to make sure we're doing those things to keep ourselves safe as well as trying to keep others safe. Amen? Well, God bless you, God. Keep you in my prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, God, just saying thank you for showing up and for showing out. Thank you for blessing us from the beginning even until the end. So now, God, as we prepare to depart from this place, but never from your presence, hold us in the heart of your hand. 
continue to love on us, cause us to continue to love on one another. For now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his joy with sitting joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them we'll see you at Bible study.